good news everyone if you know which series that's from please leave a comment in the messages and i can see who else is a little bit of a nerd like me but in this video we'll be specifically looking at vx lan on microtik so i'm actually very excited to create this video because it's something that i find very interesting on microtik and i really do think it's a protocol or feature that microtik needs to also just compete against other vendors like cisco and juniper all right so let's dive into the video Before we get into the actual configuration, I just want to talk about VXLAN in general and just explain this topology a little bit. Now, you see there's a bunch of stuff like BGP and VPLS and that we won't be covering in this video because this is my general Routro S version 7 lab that I just test everything with with every new release of version 7 that comes out. But we will specifically be looking at our provider edge routers and we'll be looking at this VXLAN block and we'll be basically spanning layer two services. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means we'll be able to get as long as these two devices can talk to each other on layer three, meaning they can at least ping each other and the ports that you're gonna use for the VXLAN is open. You can create the tunnels um, via any of your endpoints and what they use or the terminology used for the endpoints is a VTEP or a VXLAN endpoint tunnel. That is just what VTEP is short for. But all the VTEP really means is it's a place on your network, like my provider edge, that I'll be telling where to connect to. So PE1 would be using PE2 as its IP address to form the VXLAN tunnel. And then I'll also just specify what the VXLAN interface is. And what's nice is your VXLAN interface, you can treat it like any normal ethernet interface on your Microtik. You can bridge this with other ports so that you can span layer two services across um, various locations and it is really a super interesting protocol. Another nice thing about VXLAN is it is very scalable. So unlike VLANs, which has a limitation of 4,095 usable VLANs that you can use, VXLAN has in the millions of different VNIs that you can use and each VNI can have its own broadcast domain. And the cool thing is you could even have VLANs running under these VXLAN interfaces. So VXLAN is extremely scalable. It can grow your network very, very large and you can have literally millions of these layer two domains. So that is very cool. So let's actually get into the lab and configure this so that I can show you in real time how everything works and what the end goal is where we will basically have these servers um, that's in the same subnet be able to ping each other. But you could imagine these servers were in different locations perhaps even different continents, as long as these devices could connect with each other. All right, so let's get into the config. So you won't believe how quick and easy it is actually to configure VXLAN on Microtik. Um, all I'm going to do is jump onto this provider, Edge 1. I feel like one drawback why people aren't really using VXLAN currently is um, some people do report having certain nitty gritty issues. I haven't encountered those issues myself, but the biggest issue I see is to properly configure the VXLAN, you need to do this stuff via the command line. There is definitely configuration you can do on Winbox, but when you're configuring the VTEP settings, it's all done via command line. So just something to be aware of. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect onto ROM onto my provider router five, and then I'm just going to get onto my PE1, which is where we want to configure the first VXLAN interface. And what we're going to essentially do is bridge Ether 12 with that VXLAN interface so that whatever's connected to Ether 12, which is the CPE at the bottom, which is kind of just gonna act as a switch that's connected to server one so that this can get across this VXLAN tunnel that we're gonna configure. So I'm just going to close all these windows, zoom in a bit, and let's just create the VXLAN interface through Winbox. You can see where you can do that. So you can go to the interfaces, go to VXLAN, click on the plus, and now this is kind of where the issue comes in because you need to specify the name, you need to specify VNI, so that's quite important. Think of that as the similar to VPLS ID. Uh, this needs to match on both ends of the tunnel. Then you get something like a group, which is basically more for multicast. So if you're going to use multicast, you're going to use a multicast group, and then you can specify which interface works with that multicast group and the port. And if you hit apply, it's going to give me an error because it's going to say the um, group must be specified and all that stuff. So I'm just going to do this all via the command line. Admin 
emb123 and now what we're going to do is do an interface vxlan add now let's look at the options now the big things that we need to see is we need to understand what the name will be so we can give it the name of vxlan dash vni 102 which is just the group it's going to belong into and then i need to specify the vni group which is 102 and i'm not going to specify multicast this is actually going to be a very straightforward basic vxlan setup so let's just add this vxlan interface and the next thing that i want to do is interface vxlan vtip now this is the option you don't see in one box at all we're going to add a vtip and then you just need to specify the interface, which is the new VXLAN interface we just configured. And we need to set the remote IP. So in this case, I'm going to make the remote IP 192.0.0.7, which is actually a loopback address on my provider edge 2, which I've spanned across using OSPF. So these two devices can already ping each other. And <laughs> That's actually it. Like that, that's how simple it is to configure VXLAN. But besides the VXLAN configuration, I do want to add the bridge configuration as well so that I can bridge Ether 12 with my VXLAN. So let's just add another bridge. So interface bridge add name VXLAN bridge 102. And let's just add the ports to that bridge. So the ports I'll be adding is ether 12 which i know goes to my client here and then i'm just going to specify the bridge as the vxlan bridge that i just added let's do the same for the vxlan interface so it's a vxlan vni 102 apologies for that but these are native birds from my country and that's it so we've added a bridge and we've added VXLAN. So basically, that's all I'm going to do on Provider Edge 1. I'm going to jump onto Provider Edge 2 and replicate the configuration, but just change the remote IP basically. So admin TMB. So we're going to go interface VXLAN add name VXLAN dash VNI 102 with the VNI being 102. We're going to go interface VXLAN VTIP add we're going to set the interface as the vxlan interface and we're going to set the remote ip as 192.0.0.6 which is pe one's address so i just like hit right click there all right now let's add the bridge so interface bridge add name vxlan dash br dash 102 and then interface bridge port add interface and this will also be ether 12 because on pe2 ether 12 also connects onto this cpe that's supposed to be a part of this vxlan tunnel and the bridge will be our vxlan bridge that we just created now let's do the same for the vxlan interface And that should be it. So to test and see if everything's actually working, I'm just going to go into the CPE VXLAN 01. And I'll log in with my credentials. And the quickest way to see is I've already configured a LAN bridge. So if I do an interface bridge print, or let's do a port print that you can see as well. I've basically bridged ether one and two together so that this kind of just acts as a switch and now the server that i've got there which has the ip address of 192.168.0.100 should be pingable so let's just quickly check on the cp1 can i ping 192.168.0.100 that's timing out but this might just be like a little eve issue oh because the service will start up so let me just start it up quickly all right so while the server starts up let's quickly see can i ping 192.168 or Yes, 192.168.0.2, which is actually an IP address that I've configured on the bridge on the CPE VXLAN 02. Now that's really cool. That's actually exceptional because that means that the VXLAN is actually working at the moment. 
these two, even though it's not WAN IPs, it's just LAN IP addresses, but these two routers can see each other over this layer two tunnel that I've built. And if I do an IP neighbor print, I can actually see that I'm learning that Microtix MAC address, and I might even be able to do something like a MAC telnet. So if I do a tool, MAC telnet, let's see, I can actually MAC telnet to that Microtix as well. So that is freaking cool. And that's over layer three, it's over, a network that we don't have any control of, even though I do in this case, but it, this could work even over the internet. I would advise not just adding VXLAN over the internet because that is pretty insecure, but this shows you the power of VXLAN. It kind of works a lot like EOIP does, but it doesn't rely on GRE and it's not going to cause a, a, a lot of overhead and other issues. It's actually not proprietary. This is an industry standard thing. So you can use this to effectively span layer two across ver different domains or DCs. And this is actually a game changer for me. Okay, one final test, just to see if everything's actually working. I'm going to go into this virtual PC and then on the virtual PC, I'm going to see, can I ping my gateway? Because I always recommend checking, can you ping your gateway before you go any further? Yes, I can. Now, can I ping the IP address of server two on the topology? I can, and this is in the same broadcast domain. This is in the slash, the same slash 24 network. So this is effectively working as a single LAN, but it could be, like I said, across different continents or different data centers. And this has so many uses and use cases. This can be implemented in your disaster recovery. This can be implemented in just expanding how your data center communicates with each other. Cause now you don't need to figure out all of these weird connections with MPLS to make a VPLS tunnel to get things to work. You can just connect over layer three and you saw I used basically two commands for this to work. Um, I added a bridge as well, but that's how quick and easy and simple VXLAN is. And it's really that big. I'm actually so um, amazed and proud of Microtech for bringing this out. This is where I'm going to end off the video. I'd like to thank you for watching. I'd like to thank the people that have been subscribing as members and Patreons. You guys are helping support the channel and helping me just continue going on. So thank you everybody and catch you in the next video. See ya.